Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, I'm going to try to cover a number of topics in this video and I'm going to look uh, for some input from you for some answers from you guys what your experiences are on a number of topics as well. And uh, this was before the lockdown. It was over on, in uh, Mactan Newtown over on Mactan Island. Big uh, multi-use commercial condominium development, many condominium towers, uh, many commercial towers for BPO, business processing, outs outsourcing, um, call centers, you know, that type of thing. They've got their own a little medium-sized grocery store there. Uh, the it's on the it is on the east coast of Mactan Island, and that's where you will find all of the the beaches. And a lot of the beaches, the higher end beaches, have brought in white sand uh, white sand to their beaches because white sand is not uh, native to this part of the Philippines. Uh, if you go further south, quite a ways further south and further north, you will find white sand. Uh, different places, but not here in uh, Cebu City, Mandawi City, Mactan Island area. I had a meeting over here, and I've done uh, with Todd. He has a condominium over here, and did a video about his condominium. And uh, I think I mentioned that is up for rent, and I can get you the contact information if, if anybody's interested. Uh, but anyway, I was walking around, took some pictures. I was done with everything I wanted to do, and... Uh, looking for a taxi. There wasn't a, a taxi available right then, although there were several that came by me later. Uh, this motorbike driver came up to me and said, where are you going? And uh, he quoted me a price. It was a good price, a fair price. And uh, But he had somebody else. He had to take somebody just a, a short distance away first. So I said, okay, fine. I will wait for you. And while I was waiting, in fact, I had two or three other motorbike taxis call them hobble hobble uh basically <laughs> it means means animal intercourse or something like that uh, because you're sitting so close i guess but the hobble hobble driver and uh so i waited for him he come back around he was surprised that i waited for him but uh, very nice guy quoted me a i really appreciate when they quote me a very fair price uh, to start with um i've been around here long enough to kind of know what the prices should be. If, if somebody tries to uh, way overprice me right away, you know, I just I usually pass, pass them by unless there's a, unless there's a lack of transportation, which could be on a rainy day during busy, during rush hour. Sometimes you just need to take what you need to take. Anyway, they're doing a fair amount of, uh, Fair amount of infrastructure, widening roads. Place up here just to the right, Bigfoot. I think that's some some type of uh, uh, movie studio, movie studio, a school perhaps, something like that. Somebody will correct me. A long time ago I watched a, a video about them. But, and then they have a, so right over to the right, there's a English learning school. Probably a lot of, uh, a lot of Koreans, a lot of Koreans come to the Philippines to learn English. I've met a number of Japanese as well who come here to uh, learn English. Anyway, one of the first points uh, I wanted to bring up is, uh, and ask, ask you guys, what are, your, what are your goals if you come to the Philippines or another uh, foreign nation? What are your goals? Um, you know, do you want, is, is it to, to meet a significant other, meet, meet a girlfriend, get married? I've met a couple guys in their in their 50s uh, that want to start a family over here. Um, is it to uh, is it to travel? Uh, that was a big priority of mine when I first came over here. I had planned on using Cebu City as a base and to travel quite a bit. And uh, I have not traveled as much as I would like to. I have been to Bohol a couple of times. Been over to Iloilo and Bacolod. Uh, would like to travel more, spend a little more time in different areas, get to know the different areas a little bit better. You can read the all, you can read all the guidebooks uh, that are printed. You can watch all the videos that have been shown. But until you have feet on the ground, until you're there experiencing it yourself, not quite the same. I have met 
quite a number of subscribers uh, over the last uh, few years. And uh, if they want to travel, if they want to see some different areas, my advice is to do it quickly. It's very easy to get uh, comfortable, too comfortable. And that's kind of what happened to me. You become comfortable, you find out that, well, Cebu City, there's a lot to see and do here, to explore here. And secondly, I had a, I had developed an infection on my leg the, the, the night before I left on my first trip to, uh, to the Philippines. I had an irritation on my leg and uh, it was worse, a little bit worse when I got here to the Philippines about a week later. A uh, housekeeping lady at the uh, hotel I was staying at, she, she said, Sir, you need to go see a doctor. Your leg is swelling up. And so I did. I went to see a dermatologist, uh, and she gave me antibodies for a week. It got worse. She sent me for a, to a surgeon. He cut it open that afternoon. And one of the reasons I didn't travel is it would, I was afraid of getting a secondary infection in there, which he warned me about. So... Anyway, it took a couple months to heal up. By that time, I was getting pretty comfortable with a with a routine and understood that there was a lot more to see in Cebu City. Anyway, what are your what are your goals? If you're going to travel, I suggest you get out and plan to travel early. Um, how much are you going to pack? Um, I packed. I packed relatively light. I had two big bags with me, a, a huge backpack. Too large of a backpack, didn't have wheels, so I had to carry it everywhere. And a big, uh, uh, more of a camera bag type of thing. It was a, it was a backpack, but uh, had some good space for me to put my uh, camera equipment in. All of that stuff can get in your way if you're traveling. You want to travel light uh, because the different airlines out here, they tend to have uh, smaller... Uh, smaller weight limits, if you do your carry-on, for instance, smaller weight limits. You've got to pay more for more weight, and uh, especially with the present medical situation, they've even cut back more on how much you can uh, take a carry-on uh, if you can even travel at the present time. Uh, you need special permission. You're not supposed to be traveling for leisure here in uh, the beginning of July 2020. Now, I know guys, I have, I have friends uh, who are like a routine. They want a root daily routine. They're comfortable with a routine. Uh, if that's the case, uh, you're probably going to want to travel more on a, a schedule with a, an itinerary, what you want to do each and every day. Uh, there are tours. You can find tours on many of the islands going to the different places. Um, Myself, I prefer to kind of fly by the seat of my pants. Uh, sometimes that can get, get you in trouble if you're going someplace and you haven't made reservations, for instance. Uh, it may, may be difficult to find uh, a place where you want to uh, stay for the day or the night. Um, money is always an issue if you're traveling. I almost ran out of money on one trip. I went to... Uh, went to Dumaguete and I should have taken more money out there but I, I didn't I thought I had plenty I went over to Sikior took a ferry to Sikior Island rented a motorbike went around there uh, a lot of the a lot of the beach hotels were full in fact I think it was the fifth one I finally found that uh, had a room available she did not take credit cards so I paid I paid cash there uh, and you end up if you're traveling outside the bigger cities, you often end up uh, uh, spending more cash. This is a cash society. You know, some resorts, some restaurants, the bigger ones will take a credit card. Another question I have for you is, how have your plans changed? I know that uh, some of you have mentioned that uh, if you've been in, in the Philippines, you've finally got a flight back to your home country. Uh, there are a number of you who are separated. You're back in your home country. You're separated from your wife, your family, your girlfriend, your boyfriend here in the Philippines, and you're desperately waiting to get back. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I had 
pretty much decided I was just going to stay here and ride this out as long as I had to until things settled down, uh, became a little bit more normal so you, you could travel without any kind of issues. But here in the last week or so, um, you know, we're going into four months of lockdown and uh, not having any freedom to move. Now, over on Mactan Island, Mandawi City, which is a big part of the metropolitan area, they have GCQ, so they are able to uh, move around a bit. They still need passes to go some areas. Some of the, like Panay Island, uh, my friend over there in the north of Panay Island, uh, he just sent me a, an email saying that uh, I think Panay has four different provinces. And he says because of an uptick increase in in cases over there, they've closed the borders down again. So you cannot go from from one province to another province. Uh, he said that you know he's able to get into the uh, get into the malls without any issues, and uh, can sit down and have a Dunkin' Donuts, whatever, something like that. But it varies by, by region. Much of the country is uh, under the more lenient GCQ, but still a lot of the, a lot of the businesses are not, are not open. A lot of the restaurants are not open for sit down, just take out. And the economy is in a, well, it's been devastated anyway. 30 to 50% of the workforce of the country is out of work. Uh, infrastructure projects, m m most of the in infrastructure projects, uh, not all of them, there are a few going. They're, they're in the process of gearing up, bringing the workers back from the various provinces, the various islands. Uh, but basically the, uh, the uh, devastation upon the economy is very, very great. Uh, there are a couple places where Local tourism is being allowed, Boracay Island, uh, but very few people showing up. They're either afraid that they might catch something, or they just don't have the don't have the time or and or money to be traveling. If I had time and money right now, and I was in uh, in my home country, I would I would be thinking about. Uh, going to doing some traveling going to one of the first countries that opens up uh, if it's Vietnam if it's Thailand if it's uh, Costa Rica or Panama someplace if I had the time and the money and the energy and felt that it was relatively safe I would uh, I would think I would probably go to a country that was opening up uh, and then if the Philippines was my final destination, I would uh, wait it out there perhaps a month, two months, three months. And in the meantime, uh, if cases go down, you may uh, be able to come move to another country without that lockdown at that point in time. Uh, because I'm, I'm happy traveling, uh, exploring the world if I can. I am not in that uh, high risk group I have age, you know, I'm a senior citizen, uh, but but virtually 99% of the people who are having the severe cases are uh, have underlying health issues. And if you have underlying high health issues, you have um, metabolic issues, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, all that type of thing, uh, you definitely should be, be very careful. Just like you would with uh, any other disease, you take the precautions. You try to you try to eat healthy, uh, have the right nutrition, fight fight uh, naturally as much as you can. By the way, I'm headed from Mactan Newtown area, Mactan Island, over to J Center Mall in Mandawi City, which is where the uh, one immigration office is. It's also an immigration office back from where I came, back on Mactan. I think it's Gaisano Island Mall, I believe, between the two bridges there on that main road. Another question I have is, what would you do different if, for those of you who have traveled overseas uh, previously, and especially the Philippines, um, you went there with some ideas, you showed up, you're, you spent 
a uh, couple weeks, couple months, a year, more or more. And what would have you done differently? What would have you done differently? What kind of advice would you give? You know, we all have different goals and needs and requirements, but uh, just a little advice, a little bit of thoughts about traveling overseas. You're in a different culture, different country. Uh, even if you're in a country like the Philippines speaks English, it's a different type of English. Just like if if you go to different parts of of the USA or different parts of Britain, you know the the English is different. Um, New Zealand, Australia, different different countries that speak English, uh, different slang, different accents, uh, different foods, even. Um, so anyway, just interested in your thoughts about that. What uh, some of the lessons that you've learned, uh, advice you might give, things that you might do differently. While humans all over the world have many of the same basic needs and wants and desires, uh, we have different cultures. We have different ways of communicating. We have different uh, different things that. Uh, do things in different countries that might, they might be okay in your country, but they might upset somebody, it might be an insult to somebody in another country. For instance, for instance, uh, Thailand, Buddhist country, uh, placing your placing your hand on like a child's head. The, the head is apparently a, a, a sacred place, and it's uh, it's not a good thing to do to put your hand on a child's head some places to show the sole of your feet uh, foot is to uh, a bit of an insult i tend to be a friendly person especially in the philippines i will go walk down the street and say hello to uh, to many 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 people and uh, almost almost 100 percent of the time they will return my greeting hello sir good afternoon sir how are you sir and uh that's not the case in many countries. Many countries will will consider you to be uh, a, a, a bit odd, a, beer, a bit. Uh, in fact, I did that once. So when I was back in the U.S. after six months in the Philippines, I tried talking to people on the street, and they uh, very suspicious, very suspicious. I asked one guy. I said, "What?" I said, "You know, I've been visiting the Philippines. Many friendly people." And uh, when I try to talk to people on the street here in uh, in the U.S., people really just kind of uh, back off a little bit. And he said, "Yeah, well, we think you want something from us, you know, panhandler, something." Anyway, just like the traffic here, you know, traffic could drive you nuts here. I just kind of accepted it, <laughs> and very little road rage here even though many of the drivers do things that uh, you could rightfully get extremely upset with. My friend over on Mac Tan, in fact, he's, he invited me over there today. Uh, they were cooking up a bunch of good food, but I can't, I'm, I'm blocked with the uh, quarantine situation. But he said his wife's always telling him he's got a big pickup. He says, no, he gets upset. He, you know, it, it'd be easy to start cursing at these drivers. They do some crazy things. You're in a different culture. Try to relax. Try to just accept things for what they are. Try to enjoy your time. Anyway, thanks uh, for coming along on this ride. This turn, then just up a couple blocks, and I'm at J Center Mall. So as you can see, the traffic was flowing pretty good uh, just about the whole time. And during rush hour, things can change just like any place in the world. So anyway, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.